amazing how one week can change the complexion of everything you thought, felt, hoped for, wished against. Uh, man, fantastic. What a, what, a, what, a, what a great, great Sunday it was. It's the Buffalo No Huddle for the Batavia Daily News and Livingston County News. I'm Jimmy Jam from CJ Country. I host the morning show from 6 to 10. And alongside me, executive producer of this show, Mark Tillery. And uh, yeah, the Bills pulling off one in Foxborough, 33-21 over the Patriots. And uh, rumor has it uh, you were seeing bouncing up and down like 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 a rubber ball at the watching the game were you out you were out watching it right I was out watching it and that was a Christmas present from uh, the wifey to me she's like you know what go watch the Bills game today so absolutely I did and I'm not gonna <laughs> lie man uh, no uh, no shots no nothing needed because the bills were a natural high and talking about jumping up and down off the stools the the place was lit it was awesome and we called it I I, I I'm not saying that we're we're Nostradamus we're geniuses by by any any fact of the matter. I'm going to say far from it. So, but go ahead. <laughs> go up, <laughs> go up early. Force Mac to throw. Expose the Pat scheme, and there it was, man. I mean, props. Have, yeah. I do got to give props to the offensive line with arguably their best game of the season. A, 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 the deal was, and what I what I had said last week was, if you force Mac to play from behind, it's a problem. So the Bills have to start fast, and they hadn't been starting fast lately. And they got up at every, I mean, start fast. They never stopped being fast. It was every drive other than the downing at the end of the, you know, at the end of the game and, uh, and one other time. It's like every time they went down, they didn't punt. They didn't punt in this game, which is fantastic, which uh, you've probably heard the stat a million times going back to uh, throughout Bill, uh, Bill Belichick's career, not even as a head coach, but as a coach in general, he's never been in a no punt game where the other team did not have to punt and the Bills uh, pulled that off. It was, it was um, I was sitting with my Patriots wife Who's a lifelong yeah, Patriots fan? That's... <laughs> she's a lifelong Patriots fan, but she's really not a jerk about it. She's pre- I mean, my wife's my wife's pretty awesome. I, 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 uh, I married up, as they say. You a- definitely a- did. As we would say in football lore, I outkicked the coverage when I got Margot. But uh, you know, her parents, father's a big Patriots fan, and uh, you know he likes to tw- twist the you know what a little bit, you know. But uh, he, what, what could he say? What could he say? Was it, you were outnumbered, but at least you ate cookie. I, uh, <laughs> my dog, yes. When he, when he acts up, we, we put him in, we've got an old Marcel Darius kid's jersey that we put him in. Yeah. And he, ch- he chills out. It's like his thunder blanket. You know what I mean? He chills That's out. great. But, uh, no, we, it was, it was just great to watch. And, I, and I'm not, never one when we're winning, I, I gloat or anything. But, you know, I'm kind of a very objective when I watch the game. I'm not, a, I'm not an, an a-hole to other people. I just don't, it's not, it, how I, it's, it's not, but, but it was, it was fun to watch and satisfying to watch. And I, and I didn't see it coming. I was hoping for the best. You saw my pick last week, 24-14 Buffalo, because I didn't want to think about what the alternative could be but man did buffalo come loaded for bear and i think i'm telling you i think a switch got turned on in the second half of that tampa bay game for the last 10 quarters they played they have played like the 2020 bills and if they are peaking at the right time right now oh man i mean mean, it's exciting it's exciting that this it's it's very exciting and all the time that josh allen had to throw we're talking 428 total yards yeah and 28 first downs which which helped Allen go 30 47 314 3 TDs. Allen the the offensive line everybody opened everything up for him. The offensive line was like a castle wall, man. He had awesome. the longest time uh, uh to to release the ball all season long, 3.1 seconds on average. He had yeah. all the time in the world and that line gave it to him. And after I but I Butker hurt his Achilles and get well soon cuz that's a, you know, that's a season ending injury like uh but uh, I mean, the, the Bills stepped up. Dawkins wasn't supposed to play, and they right. put him in. I mean, the line adjusted. I think Spencer Brown was still on the left side, which yeah. you know how bad that had been for him. So I mean, when you, I guess when you got a week to really concentrate on and focus and plan for it, good things happen. And man, the line came to play. Yeah, it they really, did. Really did. And look, we have we've had our issues all season with talking about Allen growing as a quarterback. But I want to say this was his best decision making to date during a game. Talk about being a field general, cup, clutch plays didn't force the ball that much. You know, he there were situations where he had to get it out of there. But you know, instead of running, he threw the ball away. I think this is the most I've ever seen Josh Allen throw the ball away during a game. And I'll tell you what, those they came to play. The offense came together nicely. Yeah. And uh, like you said, Buffalo became the first team to not. Uh, punt against Belichick, so it's it's just it was just an awesome Sunday all around for us. Uh, Allen was was an improv genius, especially on that last drive that you know the, that put the, the man put the game to thirty three twenty one. Those pit those pitches, the one that digs and then the one that knocks. Um, you know, and, and that's and the thing about those words, those were perfectly covered. Yep. It wasn't like New England played bad defense against them. New England right. had them covered, especially on that, that touchdown play. Right. You know what I mean? And 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 Allen still. Got it done with that. With you know, there were times he had to for, he had to force it a little bit, and the ball went behind some of the receivers. But Isaiah <laughs> McKenzie making the that J.C. Jackson almost oh, picked. Man. man, I was like, oh no, and not then, now. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't want to put anything on Emmanuel Sanders. He's just he's not having the best uh, past couple games. 
and uh, you know the first touchdown that he missed. Uh, that he could have caught in the end zone. It was behind him. So, yeah. l- long story short, I, uh, there's nothing you could really say about this Buffalo Bills team that was terrible. Obviously, there's there's a, a few issues on defense, but we'll get into that uh, later in the show. Yeah, I feel like the defense got to step it up for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah linebackers but, especially. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's let's jump into our awards. Who's your pick for most valuable? I'm going to let you go first. I've been letting you go first all season, although I think we're going to agree this is the same thing on this one. Oh, my God. You talk about being put in a position where you can make or – I don't want to say make or break your career, but you certainly made a name for yourself, and there might be a Waffle House going up for you in Buffalo very soon. Give it up for Isaiah McKenzie, man. He made the clutch catches. He sacrificed his body for that ball on many occasions during that game, especially when he when he landed on the ball and he uh, bounced off the turf uh, towards the sideline. I'm like, wind knocked out. As soon as I saw it, like, he got his wind knocked yeah, out of was scared, man. And the awareness and ability to get open was unbelievable. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, uh, I don't want to say he became a household name during this game, but he certainly showed that he came to play. And uh, Cole Beasley, hey, that's your job right forget there. What he, forget what his name is and the significance of that. Let's talk about the fact that three weeks ago he was in the doghouse yeah. for that on that kickoff return where nobody touched him and he fumbled the ball away. Yeah. And I was on him but good for the bro. I gave him the bro seriously a few weeks ago. And Isaiah took this as an opportunity to step up. He showed he had those hands. And I, just, I just like everything about this guy, the way he carries himself. He dealt with that adversity and stepped up. And wow, when put into a spot where they needed him to perform, because it wasn't looking great without two yeah. of our receivers, he came through in a really, really big way. He and really did. Fifth year in the league. So, I mean, we got plenty of time left with this guy, and, and he's only going to grow with Allen. And, and hopefully this is one of those players that we that, that just keeps growing and, and you know, we, we see around for a while. If they can get him for a, de- a new deal, I'd be interested to see what, the, what he signs Let's for. What they, so. you know, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, my choice also is, is, is for McKenzie. McKenzie was just fantastic, and he just laid out and caught a lot of great balls. He got open. Um, I Look, he is a he is a Swiss Army knife type of guy. I don't know if he's you can rely on a steady diet him because here's the thing, New England didn't have a lot of film on him. I'm sure he only caught seven You're balls right. this season. Yeah. So I, you know I'm what I mean. Sometimes that. you get found out after a while when you play a certain way. You know what I mean? But to use him in spot duty, yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, we we need to use him. And also what you talked about about Beasley and the other receivers. I got a th- I got thoughts about that too coming up a it little bit. It showed at least there's another weapon in case Beasy were to go down or in case this, this stinking COVID comes around and gets one of our boys again. But yeah. you know there was there were some missed opportunities. There's some points left on the field, but I just love the gusto with this team yeah. and I love how McKenzie just stepped up and, and played some ball. Man, it was awesome. Nick Ficarella, the Pizza Making University. Now our uh, our uh, better luck next time award. It's it's a way to say least valuable without being so harsh about it because you know we always say better luck next time. It's how we roll. Um, what was your pick for for that? My B O N T is definitely the linebackers this week, and I'm gonna say it. They they play they over pursued the running backs of, of New England for sure, and that that allowed big runs and allowed breakaway runs, which honestly kept New England in the game because once Mac Jones may have made a few throws here and there, but. Buffalo was the stronger team. I feel like around. New England should have kept running. I think they would have yielded I, the fruit if they <laughs> stayed with it, to be but honest with you. But that's the thing. If, if they, and that's what I said about it. If the Bills kept scoring, and it got close for a second there, but if the Bills kept scoring, Bills kept scoring, uh, New England was going to have to play catch it was gonna be point. It was going to be tougher, but I, but I feel like they had time and stuff. You know what I mean? Belichick got them almost back to win against the Colts. Yeah, you know what, what I mean? That's what I was scared of. That's exactly what you I was scared of. You know what I mean? Of. It's like a, he, he's a, he can find ways. That he's very patient. I'm screaming, so, don't you know, let up. Yeah, I'm, I'm so. screaming. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, you know, the linebackers. I could see that that line, that that play at the goal line and stuff like that. I feel like um, I feel like Edmonds ended up out of position when he could have grabbed that yeah. guy. I don't know. Yeah. I think you know which one I'm talking about. Right Absolutely. at the goal line, they ran Absolutely. in. Um, mine is for Emmanuel Sanders. You got to catch those touchdowns you in do. the end zone. You got to catch them and stuff. And we're seeing a guy who's slowing down at the end of his career. I hate to and see it. Just can't, it just is what it is. I, look, I I'm going to be a broken record. We love what he brings to the locker room. He's a likable guy. He brings the right energy and attitude here. He brings veteran leadership and someone who's won before. But but right now, spot duty at best for him at this point because I really feel like he just 
He just, you know, he's having trouble producing. He gets, t- I think he gets tired. But those catches, you got to make those catches. Uh, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to fault Jake Kumaro. That pass was a little bit far right. and out of reach. Just the way if he had laid out and got it, he maybe would have got it. But I don't know. Maybe it's that time to take some of these younger guys with with, with speed like McKenzie and, and try them out at wide out and see how they do. I mean, if Sanders is missing balls like that, get the speed, get those guys open and see what they can do. Well, look, Gabe, especially Gabe, against Atlanta this week. Gabe Davis would have been that guy this oh, week yeah, if he had played. Him. We they, definitely missed him. That's the thing. And did you notice how Allen got used to throwing those high balls? Mm-hmm. Like he's used to Gabe going up and yeah. getting him. So you could tell there's a, a difference in his throws this weekend too. I think I think for big games I think for big games he gets hyped up. He has that Brett Favre disease. He throws he he'll does. overthrow on a few throws because he's the adrenaline's going. So I mean that'll happen with Allen for sure. Um, bro, seriously, this is where we just go. What it might be something in the game, might be something outside the game, whatever the case may be. Um, what's yours? Look, man, I was PO'd a little bit because the Pats are notorious for this. And, and um, it's nothing against the rest, but Bill, Je- Bill Belichick sends his boys out to be headhunters or ankle hunters at this point because you're seeing, you, you saw them trip up Josh Allen. I know it's, it's a head game and whatnot, but blatantly trip Josh. And then uh, basically, uh, Diggs takes a, a Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar would be proud of that German suplex that Diggs took after the whistle. It's just little things like that. The Patriots are a dirty team. And, and I, I get fo- football is a physical game, but there's, there's, blo- there's, the moves after the whistle that I, I didn't like New England doing. And, and I, I get it, it's football, but I just, uh, I wasn't feeling it, man. Players get hurt under Belichick, and Belichick needs to check himself before his team, uh, someone head hunts his team. Uh, mine it, like it. mine is uh, our own fans, and it's not anything happened during the game, it happened, it happened after the game, it happened, oh happened the last couple of days where people are talking about because McKenzie had this big game. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, uh, forget Beasley, just cut him, blah, blah, blah. Look, we need all hands on deck. For the playoffs, you need everybody you can because in this league, there are injuries, there's COVID. I mean, look, there were 268 cases of COVID in the NFL all of last season. There's been 400 in the month of December. You need hands (laughs) on deck, and it's good to have everybody we have. Will he be here after the season, Cole Beasley? I don't know if that's the case so much. We've talked about his foibles, and we've talked about... He's a little limited at this point of his career. He can't get separation man-to-man. He's he's better in his zone defense, but... uh, He's so, definitely become a fan favorite for sure. I, I don't like how some of the fans turn their back on him over what he does off the field. That's uh, that's really bothersome because that's most of the reason he's getting jeered this season. It's not that he's a terrible player. It's some people just can't keep politics out of their mouth, and it just it, it gets a little much, man. And that's where that's where my problem is with here, social media. And it continues. Here's the thing: Why does it even have to be politics? It should what, be that. That's that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 can, I can have a discourse with somebody, but why does it have to be based around politics? Because yeah. I get it. He casts the, he casts the first stone talking about you know vaccination on Twitter and everything else. But the whole point is just let it go. Wasn't we're he here best, to watch uh, these guys play football, and we're yeah. hoping they bring a championship to us. So yeah. I don't care what you do off the field. Just have some ethics and and win. That's it. Right. Uh, so there you go. Those are our, those are our awards. Um, so now we move on to. Buffalo taking on Atlanta. Now, here's the deal. Ooh. Atlanta's still in the playoff race, but they need a lot of stuff to happen. Uh, they need they need help. They need to win out. They need a lot of things to go their way. So, and their their chances are really really slim though. In in the in the, in the math and the overall, real slim. Buffalo, we know now. Remember last week, I put up that graphic, or had you put up that graphic of all the teams that you know the things that would help the Bills. Yeah. Now it just comes down to two things, win and win. You win, you're the AFC East champs, and you got a home playoff game. There's a couple things I would like to see. A uh, couple things I'd like to see because there's teams you don't want to face come playoff time. Before no, we jump into the, But let me get on this before we jump into the into breaking down Atlanta a little bit. Um, right now, let's assume the Bills win out. They're AFC East champions. They're going to get at least one home playoff game. Who's the team you don't want to face? I don't want to face the Titans or Kansas City. The, I, I just don't. I, uh, Kansas City, uh, Buffalo beat once, but they've also just come back around. Talk about resurgence in the team. Kansas City's a tough, tough squad now. The Titans are a squad that just always find a way to, uh, to play the spoiler two against us. And the Colts, of course. I said to pick one. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, now you went through half the playoff it's, bracket. It's, it's going nuts, man. It's going nuts. Just, when you think about I it. I don't just, feel as bad about the, about, about the Chiefs because we beat them in their own park so we can do it. Time season, though, Different man. time of season, Different time of season. But having said that, this team is now peaking at the right time for us. Maybe we weren't at our peak, but peak then. I think right. maybe we might be now. Um, and the Titans I'm less worried about right now because they haven't looked as, they haven't looked as good. Um, and to tell you the truth, the team that scares me the most is the Colts. But Colts scare me because because Jay, like, Jay, JT is uh, is no joke running that ball. Yeah, but the Colts are obviously from what we saw the day the Colts gave us a beating at home. Then you know they played New England two weeks ago, 
and uh, you know New England makes almost that comeback against them. And now Buffalo beats that New England team that that almost beat Indianapolis. So like you but said, Indianapolis the hung a hung a forty burger on us. I mean, they pounded us. The NFL is drunk this season, and and <laughs> it's just it's confusing of what team's going to show up yeah. on that day. The Colts may not get it get in. I mean, you know, right now they're going to be without Wentz this, this, this week. You That's know what crazy. I mean? It's, it's, it's crazy um, to think that. Even with the short week, they won't have them. They're not going to have them because uh, the NFL's changed the policy now about, about the COVID guidelines. With, yeah. the, with the CDC changing theirs, five now days. it's five days now. So uh, the Bills are getting everybody back. We're going to have Beasley. We're going to have Feliciano. We're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to have everybody. Gabe Davis is going to have everybody. The full uh, panoply as you, as you were. Uh, but yeah, the yes, Colts sir. are the team. Like if the Colts make it in, they worry me a little bit. And, the Bengals worry me only because they're schizophrenic. They are they don't know who they want to be when they grow up. Sometimes they'll put the wood to somebody and sometimes they just look absolutely <laughs> foolish. But Burrow put up 525. I like that kid because he doesn't get the pub that some of the other quarterbacks do. <laughs> Kid's solid and he's a battler. He's I mean, I, I he's he might he might be somebody with face that I'm not gonna like that week, but as a quarterback, I like Joe Burrow a lot. It's just if Cincinnati ever gets their legs underneath them, they're gonna be dangerous. I've been reading up on the intoxicated NFL and I'm still trying to figure this scenario out. How is Miami still still hanging out in there? Because they're the only team in the NFL history who's gone who's gone one and seven and then won seven in a row. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> they, the funny part is you, you didn't beat a solid team uh, this past week. You just like Miami fans are going nuts saying well saying they got if they're they gonna earn a heck of a game, but they they also played an injury ridden team and in, in, in a team that was just had a lot of players. They got to so. earn their way back in though. They got because they're gonna have to play New England before it's done. They got to play Tennessee before it's done. They got a rough road yeah, play if they sir. if they want to if they Go on. all right. So you, <laughs> he's calling it now. Yeah. Dolphins fans, you have no chance. New all England right, New England's definitely a tough squad. Don't right. take anything away from them. That running game gets going. Uh, the thing is, though, my, New England's got to go up early, and, and they got to keep that running game going uh, to keep Mac, keep the ball out of Mac's hands. And it makes it easier for Mac to throw these balls when the when the running backs have already had a heck of a game. So with your intel, I know you got you took some notes on Atlanta this week. I mean, the the guy I think of right away, obviously Matt Ryan, a career player there, but not having a he's having a decent year, not an amazing year, not ninety four passer rating. He's got nineteen touchdowns, gets eleven interceptions, uh, and Kyle Pitts is a revelation for that team. Like like if 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 Ryan goes after the season, he's got one year left, but I almost feel like. Pittsburgh's waiting in the wings for him. Yeah. If he goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers, look out for the Steelers next year. If oh he goes my goodness, and can they just go away already? <laughs> but the point being, if, if, if he's a replacement for Ben, can you imagine Matt Ryan on a Steelers team with those yeah. receivers? They could do some damage. But, but let's circle back, though. Ryan having an okay year. That Kyle Pitts is fantastic. Cordell Patterson, can we give him some props? That guy, talk about a reclamation to his career. It looked like he was going to fade off into this good night, and he's become this Swiss Army knife. Like, I brought it up again, using that term again, but it's true. You want him to run the ball, fine. You want him to be a receiver, fine. You want him to run special teams. He does it all, this guy. Utility. And he's had a great year for them. Huge for them. Utility player. That's the key. <coughs> You've got a player out there that can do everything. I mean, you're definitely, he's, he's, playing, he's playing a decoy on, on that side of the ball, for sure. You know, is he, is he going to run it? Is he going to go catch it? Like, either way, Matt Ryan has some weapons. But I, I just don't see the Falcons being a super powerful team. Uh, to to take down Buffalo, but we'll talk about that one. Def defensively, let's talk let's talk about that though. Where where is their Achilles heel? I know they give up more yards. The per Falcons game than the Bills do. They, they've struggled uh, with with passing this season. Uh, they uh, allowing 244 passing yards per game. Atlanta has given up 28 passing touchdowns. So Josh Allen could have a field day against them if he's got all his weapons back, and Atlanta just won't know where to turn. And like I said, same thing with New England. Go up early. And, uh, and get that passing game going. You, you got Josh Allen who can run the ball, who we, can throw we, the ball we, against I, a team that can't defend the pass. I feel like this is the time where they need to take advantage. Now that they've got their feet under them and they're scoring early in the game and doing it like they did against New England, got to keep that going. Stay up and get up and just create problems where teams have to force things. Uh, you know, make Matt Ryan look ordinary if you can. I mean, he's still got, he's still he, got some he's gas left in the baller. tank. Uh, he's still got gas in the tank, but not with that team. That team just does not allow him to be the... The guy he can be. But you know in the, the, the history of the NFL or history of just any given day, like any team wants to play spoiler. So Atlanta wants to go out there and, and ruin Buffalo's yeah, yeah. homecoming against all these fans because Buffalo gave one hell of a Christmas present to the uh, Bills Mafia for sure. I, I feel like, here's the thing, some people would say trap game or to them to lose to Atlanta would be the most Billsy thing ever. I don't see it on this Sunday coming up with the, with the weather going to be like it is. not going to be, it's got to be horrendous, but 50% chance of snow. A wintry mix. It may it may peter out before game time, but 24 degrees for the temperature and stuff. You know, it's like Atlanta. <laughs> this is one of those face slapper games. Atlanta's going to get off the bus, and it's like wow. And the thing is, our boys weather. will be out there with, with no no sleeves on or nothing, just taking in the snow and doing, making <laughs> snow angels and stuff. That's what. So you got to love about these players, man. They've adapted to the climate. They've adapted to the culture. And man, let's let's just get yeah. that win on Sunday. To me, to me, Atlanta has put, has played enough. I look with the Bills lost to Jacksonville. I get it, but the. Falcons have played enough funky opponents this season that aren't good and played them 
played them close, like Detroit, who's getting it together a little bit, and some of these other. But they played some weak teams and looked bad against them. Right. Uh, you know, in seven and eight, that's their lot in life. They're you know they're not going to have a you know they get an sh outside shot to have a winning record and maybe get in the playoffs. But other than that, let's put it this way: we're past the days of too legit to quit. Thank you. Uh, let's go with our predictions. What Bobby do you think is going to happen right here? here? Bobby Aber, wow. <laughs> oh, Scott, no, Scott I, Miller. <laughs> oh, we can go there. Andre Eisen, let's go back there. Steve Barkowski. You know, well, I, I love that I go back team, for the weekend. I, I missed I missed the '90s football. It was fun. MC yes. Hammer on the sidelines. Yes. He, he was he's a. Uh, he was the uh, normal Jackson Mahomes back in the day. <laughs> but, but we digress. Let's get to our pick. What do you got for, for the game? The Bills keep up this momentum with the play calling from last week. The Falcons could be throwing fits in the first half. I honestly think if the Bills go up early, and with, with the notes I said about 244 passing yards per game, giving up 28 passing touchdowns this season, with the weapons Josh Allen, Josh Allen has, I, I don't see Buffalo losing this game at all. I see them going up early, and I see just a beautiful homecoming in, uh, in Highmark Stadium. And uh, my prediction, in all honesty, I'm giving a 31-17 victory to Buffalo. Okay. And those points are coming late to, uh, to Atlanta. Okay, I can see I can see Atlanta maybe getting maybe getting to two touchdowns, but right now I got I'll take Buffalo 24-14. The only reason I won't give the Bills more points is, you know, we'll see what the weather looks like on Sunday and how that plays into the mix and, and everything as far as the snow and how cold it is and stuff. You know, I mean, it could be, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say 24. But who got some key some key uh, you know first downs for us this week? It was uh, definitely Moss and Singletary balling out. So again, they didn't put up career numbers, but again, you you got all this team working together. They There's a little more of a like running game happening. If they work together like they did against New England, Atlanta doesn't have a shot, especially at home. Like you said, they're getting slapped in the face with the weather alone. Wait till uh, Josh slaps them around a little bit. Choose a school where the arts come alive, where science and technology thrive, to create something extraordinary. No matter which path you choose, GCC gives you the tools to start your next journey. Because when you choose GCC, your time is now. All right, so that's going to do it for the Buffalo No Huddle from the Batavia Daily News and Livingston County News, brought to you by GCC and by Ficarella's Pizzeria. Get your game time fix. I'm Jimmy Jam from CJ Country. I'm on vacation this week, so next Monday you listen in, and then you'll hear me from 6 to 10. Mark Tillery, executive producer of the show, and the dapper guy, while well, I look like I fell out of the hamper, but I'm comfortable, and that's important when you're on vacation, being comfortable. Last but not least, I want to give a shout-out. watching me. <laughs> I, want to, I would like to give a shout-out to the friends and family of John Madden, NFL legend. Uh, you know, I was lucky because I grew up in every phase of Madden as a coach. I remember him as a coach. Yeah. The Super Bowl XI is the first Super Bowl I ever watched when they beat the Vikings 32-14. to So I remember him as that. I remember him as the pitch man. I remember him as the broadcaster. I remember him as the video game guru. Uh, and uh, yeah, and just uh, here's a guy that you know it was. Hard, it's hard to find a bad word about John Madden anywhere from the people that right. came, that whose lives he came in touch with. And uh, I suggest you watch the All Madden documentary. It's available now. You can get it on Tubi. You can get it on Paramount Plus. You can get it on um, ESPN Plus. Watch it because it's fan. It's a fantastic watch, and it's fitting that he got to watch it on Christmas Day before he passed with his family. Wow. So. To the memory of John Madden. Rest in peace, Coach. That is it for Buffalo No Huddle this week. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the rest of your week. Have a happy new year. We're going to talk to you in 2022. And go Bills. Go Bills.